Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep video. I am so excited you are here today. I have got some awesome meal prep ideas to share with you. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee or your beverage of choice. Let me share with you what we're going to be making today. First up, I'm going to be making some delicious homemade white sandwich bread. Next up is some broccoli cheddar stuffed twice baked potatoes. These make a great lunch or a side for dinner. I'm also going to be sharing a recipe for some delicious cheese manicotti. This recipe is so good, so you don't wanna miss that. Next up is some homemade granola. This is the best recipe that I have found for homemade granola, and I love eating it with yogurt in the morning for breakfast. I'm also going to be sharing how I make my buttermilk pancake recipe for meal prep in the freezer, as well as some peanut butter banana muffins, which also have oatmeal in them. This is a great way to use up bananas that might be sitting on your counter going dark. And last but not least are some vegetable spring rolls. This was probably my favorite recipe, so fresh and delicious. This is also a coincidence, but all of these recipes in this video happen to be vegetarian recipes, and some of them are from this cookbook by America's Test Kitchen, The Complete Vegetarian Cookbook. I'll link it down below. It's one of my favorite cookbooks, and I'm not even vegetarian. I just really love it. So first up, we're gonna make some white sandwich bread, and this recipe actually comes out of my Cook's Country magazine. What you'll need for this is some bread flour, and also uh, a little bit of water, some melted butter, salt, some active dry yeast, some whole milk, you want that to be room temperature, and some honey. So in the bowl of my stand mixer, I have the bread flour, the yeast, and the salt. And I'm just stirring that together with a fork until everything is well incorporated. Next, I'm going to mix up the wet ingredients. So in this measuring cup, I have some whole milk and I'm going to mix that with the honey and melted butter until the honey is dissolved. If you guys wanna try out this recipe, I will have it typed out in the description box below. Um, the recipe does call for making this in a stand mixer. I'm sure you could make it by hand if you wanted to take the time to knead it for eight minutes. Personally, I think that it is so much more convenient to make it in my KitchenAid with a dough hook, but that is completely up to you. So I have my KitchenAid mixer with the dough hook attached, and I'm going to just slowly pour the wet ingredients in with the dry and just let that mix until it is all combined. Okay, so right now we're just making sure that the wet and the dry ingredients are thoroughly combined we've, before we start to knead the dough. So um, like I said before, this dough needs for eight minutes in a stand mixer with a dough hook. Um, I am using my KitchenAid, which I've had for many, many years, probably about 20 years now I've had it and it's still going strong. Um, but this is the easiest way I think to knead dough. Now you could do it by hand, definitely. Um, I think eight minutes seems like a lot longer when you're hand kneading rather than kneading it in a mixer, but you do you. Um, after that is done kneading, you'll see that the dough has a really um, sort of smooth consistency, and that's when you know that it has been uh, kneaded properly. So I'm just going to scrape that dough off the hook, and then I'm going to turn this out into a glass bowl that I have uh, greased with a little bit of vegetable oil. You could use olive oil or butter or shortening. Um, essentially what you wanna do is just roll that dough ball around in the bowl and get it thoroughly coated with the oil so that it doesn't stick to the bowl or the towel that you put on top of it. So this will rise and do the first rise in the oven. Now I have a proofing function on my oven um, specifically for proofing bread dough, but if you don't have that, you can totally put the bowl in the oven and turn the oven light on. That will give just enough heat to um, proof your bread if you wanna do it that way. 
So you can see here that my dough has um, just about doubled in size. And now we're going to turn this out onto a, uh, a floured board and put it into a loaf pan. I wanted to mention also that any cooking tools or supplies that I mention in this video, I'll have linked in the description box below if you're interested in um, adding any of these tools to your kitchen arsenal. So you can see here that I kind of pat the dough into a rectangle and then I'm rolling it tightly into a log. This will make sure that your bread rises evenly and has a good crumb. I'm putting it into a greased um, loaf pan and then I'll also put a piece of greased plastic wrap on the top. This is to keep the surface from drying out and to make sure that the dough doesn't stick to the um, the plastic wrap. These long skinny loaves, I really like them. I um, got the idea for them from Frugal Fit Mom here on YouTube. So um, check her channel out if you haven't already. She posts a lot of similar content that I do. Uh, after the second rise, they go into the oven and you can see that mine turned out a little bit flat on the top, but I think that's because I used a long skinny loaf pan. But either way, this bread was delicious. Hot out of the oven with some fresh butter. You cannot beat that. Would recommend. Okay, so the next recipe that I'm sharing with you is some broccoli cheddar stuffed potatoes. These are just like twice baked, twice baked potatoes, uh, but they're a broccoli cheddar version. And so to start these out, I just have four medium russet potatoes that I've scrubbed and rinsed and dried. And these are on a baking sheet. Um, with a little bit of oil rubbed onto them and some kosher salt. I also made sure to poke holes in them so that they don't explode in the oven. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> and while those are baking, I'm going to go ahead and steam up the broccoli for this dish. So I just have about two small heads of broccoli that I've washed and chopped up and I'm going to steam that until it's tender. While the broccoli is steaming, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some chives for the filling. You could also use green onions. Once the broccoli is steamed, you can just go ahead and drain that. You don't have to chop it up any finer because you'll see as we stir it in with the potato filling, it will all kind of get mashed up together. Here are my uh, potatoes that were done. And I let those cool a little bit and then cut them in halves. And then you do want to let them cool a little bit before you scoop the filling out or you're probably going <laughs> to burn your hands. But into a large bowl, I just scooped out the flesh of the potatoes and put them in there along with some butter. And then I'm also going to add some shredded cheese and some broccoli and just mix everything together. And this will end up being the filling for the potatoes. Um, I think I also added sour cream to this. I can't remember. You can really customize this recipe to however you'd like it. If you're not vegetarian and you are a meat eater, you could add bacon to this. Um, I have done them before also um, and left the broccoli out and just did a cheese filling. Either way you do it, it's great. Here's what they look like before they go into the oven. So the meal prep portion, at this point, what you could do is you could freeze these or put them in the fridge just like this and then bake them on the night when you wanted to make them. You can see there I actually had some extra filling and so I baked that in a separate dish which worked out just fine and this is how we had these um, with steak um, obviously these could be a meal in itself if you're a vegetarian you could have a salad on the side and dinner is done but those are really good and I would recommend them also Okay, so here is another great vegetarian recipe for cheese manicotti. This is one of my favorite dishes to make and eat. I love baked pasta dishes. For this recipe, you'll need some marinara sauce. I have some homemade marinara sauce that I had in my freezer, along with some extra pizza sauce that I'm just going to mix together. I have some manicotti shells, some fresh parsley that will go in the filling, also two containers of whole milk ricotta cheese, some grated Parmesan cheese. I have some eggs, 
some mozzarella that I will shred up fresh, some dried basil and some salt and pepper. So I'm going to start by making the filling. I'm going to chop up the parsley pretty finely and get that into the bowl. If you don't have fresh parsley on hand, you could definitely use dried parsley. I don't think that that would affect um, these at all. Next, I'm going to crack two eggs into the bowl. And then um, this filling is super simple. Um, basically, it's just the eggs and the parsley and the uh, ricotta cheese along with shredded mozzarella and um, salt, pepper, and basil. That's it. So while this was, um, while I was mixing this up, I actually had the noodles boiling, which I'll show you in a little bit. The original recipe that I followed for this um, dish, I'll have linked down below. And the original recipe suggests to use the no boil lasagna noodle sheets and roll those around the filling. But I personally think it's just as easy to, um, buy the manicotti shells and then I boil them about halfway, pipe the filling in and bake them that way. But you could try the lasagna sheets as the recipe suggests. If you do try that, let me know how that works out. I prefer to use freshly shredded mozzarella for this recipe or any other um, pasta dish I make. But if you only had um, pre-shredded mozzarella on hand, that would work just as well. So as you can probably tell, this isn't really a meal prep that I did all in one day. This were, you know, was several recipes that I made over a period of several weeks. But in this video, I just wanted to kind of show you guys some ideas of what you could do for meal prep. So this isn't really meant to tell you, you know, these are all the things you could do in one day because likely you couldn't accomplish all of these things in one day. But in these videos, I just like to kind of give you ideas and suggestions of things that you can uh, meal prep in order to make dinner time or lunch time or breakfast time easier when it comes to that. So right now you see me just putting the cheese filling into a Ziploc bag. I'm going to put that in the fridge and let it sit while the noodles are boiling. So I have a large stock pot here that I have some salted boiling water and I'm just dropping the manicotti shells in one by one. That's important because you want to make sure that they don't stick together. Um, obviously, if these tear or break, you won't be able to use them as intended. And then I just went ahead and cooked these to the package directions, but I maybe cooked them like two or three minutes shy just so they weren't totally tender uh, because these are going to be baked in the oven with sauce. They will continue to cook. So when those were done cooking, I just had a uh, a baking sheet with some greased foil on it off to the side and I'm going to take out the noodles one by one and put them on the greased foil sheet and then I can let these cool so they won't stick together. They need to be a little bit cool so that I can stuff them, obviously. So what I did with this huge batch of manicotti was um, one night, the night that I was making this, we actually had it for dinner and then there were two portions that I made as a meal prep and then there were there was another portion that I made as a, um, a dish to take over for my grandparents for dinner. So that's kind of how I did this in meal prep style. It's, it's also good to put in the freezer. You can make it ahead of time up until the baking point and then just cover it with foil, freeze it, and then when you wanna bake it, just thaw it out and bake it as you normally would. So now that the shells are full, I am just filling them with the cheese mixture. So I've cut a little bit of a hole in one corner of the um, Ziploc bag and this does get a little bit messy but it's it's doable basically you just want to fill one end with the cheese mixture turn it around and fill the other end so that you you, you get get them as full as possible if you try to do this with a spoon I don't think it would it would work out quite as well and yeah these are a little bit of work but once you taste them you will not be sorry <laughs> that you put the effort in so i have a little freezer pan here and this was just a big enough portion to take to my grandparents so i'm just spreading a little bit of marinara sauce in the bottom uh, the original recipe does have 
instructions on how to make some homemade marinara and I've made that before and it's really good but in this case I already had some frozen and so I just used that instead so I put four uh, manicotti shells in the dish this was just enough for two servings for my grandparents I also took them some muffins and a salad so they had plenty to eat there was a little whole tomato in my <laughs> marinara sauce there that I had to fish out and then you can just kind of spoon the rest of the marinara sauce over the top uh, don't be skimpy with the marinara sauce because this will absorb the pasta will absorb quite a bit of it and you definitely don't want it to be dry so just sprinkle a little bit of fresh mozzarella over the top and here is your meal prep so like I said this can go right in the freezer if you wanted to make it a freezer meal or just pop it in the fridge for up to three to four days and then you have a dinner all ready to bake for later in the week So my two other dishes here, I have a larger square dish and then a smaller uh, sort of individual sized container. The one on the right I am making for dinner for my family on this particular night that was just big enough for myself, my husband, and our two kids. Um, I did want to add some extra sauce there just to make sure that that didn't stick. Um, but the container you see on the left there, these are little Pyrex dishes and they are perfect for meal prep. So what I did was I ended up baking two of those smaller containers along with this larger one and then I had two lunches to take to work during the week. So, um, you know, meal prep doesn't have to be complicated. Just think of, of things you can do while you're prepping your, your normal meals that you can kind of make extra or make ahead and it, it works out great. Um, you can see here that I have the one pan for my grandparents. I put some uh, instructions on top of there for them and then I have the tray for us and then two of the smaller portions for me to take to lunch and then um, this is what it looks like after it's baked in the oven it turned out so delicious and then I also had the two smaller pans left over for my lunch that week I actually think it tasted better after it sat in the fridge for a couple days but definitely would recommend that recipe if you like cheese manicotti Okay, so next up, I'm going to share the recipe that I use for homemade granola. This also comes from America's Test Kitchen, and I'll type it out in the description box below, but it's very simple, and I have honestly stopped buying granola in the store since I've been making this because it's so much better if you make it on your own, and one of my favorite things to have for breakfast is yogurt with granola. So in a large bowl here, I just have some brown sugar, some maple syrup, and some vanilla, and I'm adding some salt to that along with some vegetable oil don't skimp on the vegetable oil or the maple syrup because that is what's going to help make this granola extra delicious and crunchy so you can whisk this up um, I get a lot of questions on this blue fork <laughs> that I have and uh, I got it actually at Sur La Table when we were in Denver for our anniversary last year and I found some similar ones online on Amazon so I'll, I'll link some down below I can't find the exact one that I got but I, I will be able to find something similar if you're interested it's very useful for many things in the kitchen so you can see that I put my uh, oats in the bowl there along with the wet mixture and then this is sort of where you can customize it for your tastes so the original original recipe I think calls for nuts and dried fruit I don't particularly care for dried fruit in my granola I just like it to be crunchy and so I'm adding about a cup of chopped pecans and a cup of chopped cashews you could use any nuts or seeds that you have on hand or that you like and then I also added some unsweetened granola or unsweetened unsweetened granola unsweetened coconut to this recipe and this was delicious. I would totally recommend that. It made it just like sweet and crunchy enough. I don't know, this was the best batch of granola I've ever made, I think. Um, I would highly recommend it. So make sure that you get that mixed up really well. And then once everything is combined, you can turn it out onto a baking tray. I just have a large baking tray lined with um, parchment paper. And then you're gonna spread this out and kind of 
pack it into a tight layer. Um, packing the granola down is what's going to help give you um, crispy chunks of granola. It's going to help the granola sort of bind together and that way when you break it apart after it cools, it gives you those crispy chunks. It, it kind of reminds me, you know, like Honey Munches of Oats with like the oat clusters. That's what it reminds me of. It's really good. So this is going to go in the oven and it bakes for about 40 to 45 minutes. Just make sure you check on it that it doesn't burn. If you have a convection setting, I would recommend using it because it helps dry the granola out and make it crispier. But this is what it looks like when it's done. Make sure you let it cool completely before you break it apart. That is what's going to help it be super crispy. So once it's cool, you can break it apart. I like to store it in mason jars with lids in the pantry. It keeps for several weeks and it is a home run. It's super good with milk too as cereal if you like to eat it that way. Okay, so next up is my fail-proof recipe for buttermilk pancakes, which if you guys have watched my channel before, you've probably seen me make these, but I thought it was worth it to include it since it is one of my favorite things to meal prep, one of Connor's favorite things for me to meal prep, and uh, it's something I've been making for a long time and love to share the recipe, and plus it's vegetarian, right? So in uh, my bowl here for the dry ingredients. I have two cups of flour, three tablespoons of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, some baking powder and baking soda. And you can see I got a shell in my egg there. Whoops. <laughs> I also, uh, for the wet ingredients, use two cups of shaken buttermilk, two eggs, and then four tablespoons of buttermilk, or I'm sorry, four tablespoons of butter that's been melted. This recipe originally came from a Food Network magazine in 2011, and I've saved the clipping all of these years, and I still love it. I also add a little bit of vanilla, and that's not in the original recipe, but I think it makes it taste a little bit better. So after that is whisked, you can kind of judge the consistency of the batter. If it seems a little bit thick, add a little bit more milk or buttermilk. Um, and then I'm just going to scoop these onto a hot griddle that I've greased with cooking spray. You can use a skillet if you don't have um, a griddle, but I would recommend a nonstick surface to make sure that your pancake don't stick. So these are obviously really good to make and eat right away, but I like to share these as a meal uh, prep idea because pancakes really freeze really well. And it's something that even if you're making them on the weekends anyway, you can kind of make a huge batch, throw them in the freezer. And then especially if your kids like mine really like pancakes, it's a super easy breakfast for them during the week. All I do is I take them out of the freezer and I just put them in the microwave frozen. I wrap them in paper towels and heat them up for like a minute and they're perfect. My kids don't even know the difference. In fact, Connor always praises me on how fluffy these pancakes are. But um, once they've cooled a little bit, basically you just want to put them in a Ziploc bag. I put waxed paper in between the layers of mine just so I can get them apart easier. But that's it. I keep them in the freezer, warm them up during the week, and they are perfect. I would totally recommend doing pancakes in the freezer if you've never done that before. Okay, so the next recipe that I'm sharing is for some healthier peanut butter, banana, and oatmeal muffins. And this is a recipe I've made a couple times before, but I'm not sure if I've shared it specifically on my channel before, but it's a great way to use up any bananas that you may have that are super ripe sitting on your counter. Okay, so I'm putting my ripe bananas into a bowl here, and I like to use a potato masher to mash these up. You could definitely use a fork if you wanted to, but I always think a potato masher is the easiest. So just go ahead and mash those up until they are nice and creamy. Um, if you're using a mixer to make these, you could totally just do this with the mixer as well. Next, I'm going to add uh, two eggs and make sure that those get combined in with the eggs. Uh, the other ingredients in this recipe are uh, brown sugar, uh, three tablespoons of vegetable oil, three quarters of a cup of milk, uh, one 
quarter cup of creamy peanut butter. I may have put in a little bit more peanut butter than called for, but that's our little secret. I also added some vanilla. And then I think what makes these so appealing to my kids, my son especially, who has a sweet tooth, is mini chocolate chips. But really, there's only a quarter cup of brown sugar in this whole recipe, along with the peanut butter. And then there's also oats in here, which give them some fiber. So overall, I think this is a pretty healthy um, muffin recipe. As far as muffin recipes go, they're not overly sweet. And I like to make these into mini muffins. Um, I have like a cake plate on my counter that I keep these on. And my kids love me to buy those. Oh, what? I don't, I forget what brand they are. Maybe they're Entenmann's, the Little Bites, um, little chocolate chip muffins. And I buy them every once in a while, but mostly I just think that they're junk food. And so if my kids are going to eat mini muffins, I'd rather have them eat something like this that I know what ingredients are in it rather than a bunch of preservatives. So I also added some baking powder, some baking soda, and some salt. And you don't even really need a mixer to mix these up. I'm just using a wooden spoon to combine everything until all the dry ingredients are mixed in thoroughly. So after the batter is mixed together, I'm just going to spray my mini muffin tin with some cooking spray. I'm not even using paper liners for this. I have to give a plug for this mini muffin tin. I've had a few over the past several years. I've even had a Pampered Chef mini muffin tin and I wasn't all that impressed with it. But this one is $12.99 on Amazon. It's a Chicago metallic mini muffin tin and I really, really like it. As long as you grease the cups of this, these muffins will come out perfectly um, without any papers and I, I just think it's great. Plus, mini muffins are so much easier and cuter to eat. So I'm using a cookie scoop or a mini muffin scoop, I guess you could say, <laughs> to put the batter out into these. And this muffin tin uh, makes 24 mini muffins. I would say if you were making regular sized muffins, you would probably get about 12 out of this and you want to make sure to obviously bake the mini muffins for less time if you're making those just check them you don't want to over bake them or they will be tough but here's what they look like when they come out of the oven i like to let them cool for a little bit in the pan and then i put them on a rack and let them cool the rest of the way but everyone really liked these um, i gave some to my grandparents my kids ate some even adam ate some and they make for a nice healthy snack or breakfast along with some fruit Okay, so we are at the tail end here of our seventh recipe, and this one I'm going to show you might just be my favorite out of all of these. These are homemade vegetable spring rolls. So we're going to start out by making the peanut dipping sauce for this recipe, uh, which is really, really good. And so I have a nonstick pan here, and I am just using my garlic press to uh, press two cloves of garlic into that oil. I'm also going to add some red chili flakes and then just saute the uh, chili flakes along with the garlic over low heat until um, they are lightly toasted. Okay, so for the rest of the ingredients for the peanut dipping sauce, you'll need two tablespoons of tomato paste, a teaspoon of sriracha, a quarter cup of water, and then one quarter cup of hoisin sauce. You can get this in the Asian aisle at your grocery store, and one quarter cup of peanut butter. Uh, when I was making this, I was like, you know, this combination sounds a little odd, but honestly, it turned out very good. I would recommend it. I think this would be a good peanut sauce for like a cold noodle um, salad recipe also. So you can see here that the garlic and the peppers are just simmering in the olive oil. You want to make sure that you don't um, overcook that because it will burn very easily. Um, once that was done, I just poured the hot oil mixture into the sauce and then whisked that around. Now, at this point, you may need to add a little bit of extra warm water in order to thin the sauce to a dipping consistency. I probably added another quarter cup of warm water, um, but just you'll have to judge that based on how thick or thin your sauce is. I poured this into a small mason jar and set this in the fridge to chill while I made the rest of the spring rolls. All 
right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is make the seasoning mixture that I'll use to flavor the noodles and all of the veggies that will go in the spring rolls. So if you want to make this recipe truly vegetarian, you would not use fish sauce. There's actually a recipe in this cookbook for a fish sauce substitute, so check that out if you are vegetarian. Since we're not vegetarian, I did go ahead and use regular fish sauce, and I mixed that with some sugar and some lime juice and this is what we'll mix with the shredded carrot and with the cucumber and with the rice noodles and I would not stip, skip this step because I think it does give a really good flavor to the finished spring rolls. I think sometimes spring rolls can be bland and this helps them not be so bland. So you will need some shredded carrot. Um, my son Connor wanted to help me with this and so I was just kind to trying to kind of show him how to um, shred the carrot on the box grater without um, cutting himself. He is left-handed, so sometimes things are a little more difficult <laughs> for left-handed people in the kitchen. I feel like not a lot of tools are made uh, for them, but he managed to help me do that. And then next we put the shredded carrot into a bowl and added about two tablespoons of that seasoning mixture. So I even think if you're a vegetarian, you could leave out the fish sauce and maybe use some soy sauce instead along with the lime juice and I think that would be just fine. So um, also along with this, we'll add in some chopped cashews. The original recipe calls for chopped um, peanuts, but I didn't have any peanuts and so I used cashews and it was just as good. These are the angel hair uh, rice noodles that I'm going to be using for the spring rolls and I'm only cooking about a third of the package. I'm just going to put them in some salted boiling water and then turn the stove off and let them soak for about 10 minutes. So I have an English cucumber here and I'm just going to cut this into match sticks. You want to make sure that any veggies that you're putting into these spring rolls are either shredded or you're cutting them into like match stick strips because they are going to need to be rolled up um, in the spring roll and that is what will facilitate that. You could also do peppers. I've made spring rolls with red peppers before and that's really good too. So we added a little bit of that seasoning again to the uh, cucumbers and Connor is helping me uh, stir that around to give those some flavor. So next I'm going to chop up my cashews. Like I said, the original recipe called for peanuts. I didn't have any. I would not leave these out if you like nuts. I think that it gave the spring rolls a really good crunch, um, but cashews work just as well as peanuts would have, I think. So if you've never made spring rolls before, they can be a little bit tricky to roll up and they take a little bit of practice. So um, just make sure that you try again if you've tried before and you haven't been successful. I think this is the third time I've made these and this was the first time where I actually felt like I made <laughs> some decent looking spring rolls. So I drain the noodles and I'm just going to toss them with some of that lime juice and fish sauce seasoning just to make sure that they don't stick together and to give the noodles a little bit of flavor. So here is what the rice paper looks like and this is what spring rolls are wrapped in. You can find this in the regular grocery store or at least in my grocery store. I can find it in the produce section next to the egg roll wrappers. I like to soak these in a pie plate because it's just the right shape. You can do it in room temperature water and they only take about two minutes to soften up. The key to rolling these is to do it on a damp towel. So I have a tea towel there that I've just dampened with cool water and I have that on my counter. So I lay the spring roll wrapper down, add my herbs. I added basil and cilantro. You could also add mint. I put on some of the noodles, some of the shredded carrots, and then some of the cucumber. And then I'm just gonna fold the sides of the spring roll in and then roll it up as tightly as I can without tearing it. Um, basically just like you would roll up a burrito. And and like I said, it will take a few tries to, <laughs> to get this down. So don't be discouraged, just keep practicing. Um, even if you have some that don't look all that pretty, 
you can definitely still eat them and they're delicious. So this original recipe said to eat these like within a couple hours of making them, but I actually found that I could keep these in the fridge for a few days. I actually kept them up to three days and they did just fine. What I did was I stored them in the fridge in a Tupperware on a damp paper towel and I was actually able to take them to work for lunch just fine. I didn't have any problem with that. So they will, they will hold up for a few days in the fridge. So I'm just continuing to make these here. Connor is helping me. Um, I always like it when my kids want to help me in the kitchen because it does encourage them to try new things. He did uh, try one of these and he didn't like it so much, but he did give it a try, which um, I thought was, was really good. I think it was the dipping sauce that he didn't like. So here's what these look like. If you like spring rolls, I would definitely recommend these. This was the best recipe that I've ever tried. And I think that that peanut sauce just makes them perfect. I would definitely make this recipe again. And then here in a second, you will see how I stored them in a shallow container just on a, um, a damp paper towel. So that is going to wrap it up for today's meal prep video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you are looking for more meal prep inspiration, you can click on the two videos on the right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.